Okay, so I'm going to start going through the architectural guide for the RTS course. This is something that I produce for pretty much every project that I create that starts to get larger than a few days of time. So the basic idea of this is that it is a list of slides that contain a very quick explanation of how a particular architecture or pattern works within the system so that any new developer can jump on board and start working with it. They can read through these and understand how, we, how our mouse interaction model works, how to start capturing new mouse events. Uh, for material properties and how we change and alter materials dynamically in this. Those are all generally explained in here. I should also express that each of the sections inside of here represents something that will be covered in one of the upcoming videos. Not in specific for every one of these slides such as observables, but I will be showing its use throughout them. Let's start with observables. So observables are based on scriptable objects, so we can create them as files. Now let's talk about the challenge. A standard practice in Unity is to have a whole lot of wasted update calls that only check if there's something to do. And also connecting the data between all of these different systems can be its own exercise in architecture, a painful and expensive one. So the solution to simplify this down is that observables will store data and update listeners when the data changes. Updates won't be needed in many cases, and connecting data will be drag and drop. For example, in Assets, in the right-click folder, uh, create we can choose to create RTS Observables Vector3, and that produces a new file to store a Vector3, and it's named, so we know exactly what its purpose is. And then in the mono behavior, uh, in a mono behavior or a scriptable file, we can say public Vector3 Observable and give it a field name and now that class can reference it from the IDE. We can wire it up. We can say field name dot add listener and, uh, and pass in a function that accepts a vector three. We can also take that field name and set its value, which when we do, it's the vector three will get passed immediately onto every other function that accepts that, every other thing that's listening. And then finally, we can destroy it with a remove listener. Okay, uh, next we have manager hierarchy. So the challenge is that code managing a scene should have an easy to find location. The solution, the first object in the scene hierarchy will be an empty manager and hold name child objects for each major manager segment. For example, our managers has an interaction section, it has a target manager, and it also has a selection manager. So now we're going to talk about the unit info block. So the challenge is that units and other interactables contain many supporting behaviors. Get component is common and slower to solve this. And anything asking for it needs to understand how these objects are related, increasing the cross domain comprehension, which is generally bad. The solution is rather than seek them with a get component, the info class will contain references directly to these other objects. Other pieces of architecture can now rely freely on info without needing to know the structure of the object within, but still get the data housed for multiple behaviors. So currently the info houses unit, selectable, and player info. This is gonna grow over time. This can be passed as a reference to a specific unit, just the info object, to allow lower level object handling different with differing responsibilities without needing to know or question how to pass these, this varying content. Becomes easier to just pass a single object reference around and have any method support it. Next, we're going to talk about the mouse interaction model. So, all mouse interactions are captured by Interaction Manager. It reports XY coordinates on the screen and no ray casting. And the Interaction Manager dot instance dot listen for click or zoom or drag are all events that we can access at any time to be able to listen for all of these types of actions to happen. The Selection Manager captures these events for click and double click. It does a ray cast and seeks to find the info object, which of course would also potentially have a selectable object. 
on double click it uses info.unit name to find matches and info.unit.player to get access to the full list of units for that player. Selectable has a pair of Unity events for select and unselect. These currently trigger another component, uh, Unit Selector, which highlights. Target Manager is paying attention only to right clicks. It only, share, it only sets a shared Vector3 observable for other things to pay attention to, specifically setting targets when we right click. The next one is Material Properties. So in material properties, there are, there are many material changes that will be unique to only one unit at a time. And to manage it via separate materials would, be unreason would unreasonably trigger hundreds of unique instances that are hard to manage. For instance, the shading as it goes up and down to highlight something. So we could create separate material instances for each one, but that would be incredibly costly as well in the resources. Uh, as every single unit would undoubtedly have to have its own separate instance of this. Your scene size would begin to increase quite dramatically and it would decrease its flexibility. So the solution, Unity has material property blocks which allow the bulk of the materials to remain the same while only altering certain settings on that specific material. We'll specifically use a class called material properties to set these variables. So whatever you call this reference, material properties dot block dot set float set color to set the float or a color value, whatever you're passing into it, and then finally call the material properties dot apply function, and it will set it. So currently, unit selector and unit color use this. The last one is the general object structure. So the challenge is that writing classes to uniquely handle all visual changes can be burdensome and often reduce a designer's ability to freely shape the design. Often these elements are placed into larger structures rather than being housed as smaller supporting behaviors. So we end up with more complicated object structure and we end up with a lot of our logic being tied directly in to the visual behavior of it. So the solution is whenever reasonable, events that have visual changes should be triggered at, through Unity events. So a designer can wire them up in a prefab or game object and choose exactly how that'll work, exactly how they want. Other classes, when needed to help shape an effect, should be as isolated as reasonable, especially to not hold domain or game state influencing data. These should be after the fact or exposing events to pass that information back to something that will pay attention. So the designers should wire up the Unity events to the non-domain classes, and the designers should familiarize themselves with the existing non-domain domain behaviors uh, with all of them that are available and be comfortable asking for more new ones to be created. All right, that is the key structure of everything going on in the RTS course right now. As time goes on, this, this guide will get updated, and this will help shape and explain how the different parts of it can grow.